figure out. Really sorry about that, but we've got a couple things to show you and without any further delay, further delay, we're gonna get started with this. So today we're gonna show you how to do an Angular project, a NativeScript Angular 9 project. And Nathan has uh, something to say about that while I get that ready. So uh, Nathan, when did the N Angular 9 become available? We just published Angular 9 the second week of June, which might have been that first week, but um, it's been out now for a couple of weeks. Okay, all right. And um, can you tell a little bit about the story behind the, uh, the scoping? Scoping is a bit more consistent with what other vendors are doing on NPM these days, and there's always been some confusion with packages around native script dash. Some of them are scoped, some of them are not scoped. So we're making a big push to try to scope everything uh, this summer. So hopefully by end of July, or at least in August, everything will be scoped for native script 7. Okay. And uh, what's the benefit of this scoping? Mainly, it's easier to find related dependencies for a certain organization. So if you're looking at node modules and you do need to poke around at what else related to a certain uh, stack you're using, it is pretty tidy to have everything organized under an ad hoc scope inside node modules. It makes it be easier to poke around. Uh, sometimes you even do need to do patches or, or explore patches on NPM modules, so it's nice to have them all organized. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, one of the biggest differences with Angular 9, as everybody probably knows by now, is Ivy. Now, I don't know if everybody knows what Ivy is all about. And um, you can do Ivy, or you don't have to do Ivy. Why would one do Ivy and the other one not do Ivy? Why would you pick Ivy over not doing Ivy? Some people are commenting about the volume of my mic. Uh, Alex, I'm not sure you can bring the volume up. Let's see. Maybe uh, try try saying something. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit okay, gently check, here. Check, mic one, mic two, mic one, mic two. Check, 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 check. So Ivy. Um, is the new vendor uh, from Angular, and it does offer some uh, performance advantages, but also some improvements to uh, the way the code is, is uh, bundled in the template engine. And, um, it's definitely, if you can uh, move to Ivy, I would recommend it, uh, because Angular 10 is right around the corner. In fact, we have Angular 10 working today with native script and we probably will release that support tomorrow or by friday uh, at least and that will be ivy uh, only so that everything will be uh, ivy enabled at that point so definitely move to ivy if you can okay very cool so since we're here and we got this uh, window open let's jump into this and let's check this out Let's um, do a couple of things first. First, we're going to create a brand new project in NativeScript Angular with the new CLI, and I believe I'm on the latest. Let's take a look here. So right now, I'm going to do TNS version 6.7.8, which, um, which is going to give us the ability to have... Um, I'm going to turn down my computer volume a little bit so that people can hear you without my microphone. Okay, so here we're going to do uh, a brand new application using Native Script Angular. TNS create new ng dash dash ng. And this is going to use the new CLI. So my sound is too high now and everybody else, and Nathan's sound is too low. Let me turn down my volume a bit. 
I'm gonna have to remember all these settings. Thanks for uh, bearing with us folks and for helping us troubleshoot these things because this is the first time we're doing this. Hopefully more to come, but hopefully smoother next time. All right, so we've got uh, a brand new native script application creating here using the CLI and I've got uh, quite a few things running. My CPU is running hot so it might just be a little bit. In the meantime, while that's happening, if you guys have any questions that are related to native script and Angular, let's bring it on here. Come on, native script plus Ionic plus Angular. That's Coding Kang. Coding Kang, I recognize you. Welcome back to the channel. You've been here for a long time, leaving comments. Really appreciate that, Coding Kang. Okay, so if they can only hear my microphone, I'm going to turn up. Hey, William. Hi, William. So, um, hey, uh, John, Angular 10, we are, uh, we actually have working today. So we've been working on that past couple days, and we're going to publish support for Angular 10 by tomorrow or the next day. Um, it's worth noting that uh, the changes for Angular 9 and to update follow right into um, Angular 10. So really all of these uh, upgrade points that we're going to cover are applicable for Angular 10. So it's good to carry through um, exactly the path we're going to go down here. Okay. What's the minimum version of native script to use Angular 9? You know, you could use uh, really native script probably below six if you wanted to. Native script core is decoupled from Angular, so you can use an older version of core if you want. Um, but I would recommend using the latest just because there's a lot of uh, goodies and uh, stability fixes in the latest. So um, usually never too much danger in updating to the latest core modules or the latest native script CLI unless your project is just for whatever reason maybe locked uh, to a certain version for organizational reasons okay very nice okay folks we got our project up this is the uh the latest cli creating the latest native script angular project just out of the box and um, you already pretty familiar with the template. If I run this, then you'll see we have a list of football players. Uh, by the way, who says football and who says soccer? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Uh, let's call them football players because I think that's what the rest of the world calls them. And um, all right, let's take a look at the dependencies here in package.json. So we have two runtimes, TNS Android, on 6.5, TNS iOS on 6.5, and we have this script, NGCC, and I think that has something to do with Ivy. Maybe uh, Nathan can go into that. And then we got, look at this, we got Angular packages, all at 9.1, soon to be 10.0, like Nathan just said. And we got this one, native script Angular. So everything that's becoming native script related is gonna be very soon under the at native script umbrella. 
Now people are talking about football. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been some good games on lately. I don't blame them. Um, so, listen, the TNS core modules that Alex is showing here, you, of course, can still use that, but I would recommend uh, using at NativeScript core. So anywhere in your package where you have TNS core modules, you can switch that to at NativeScript slash core, um, also with the same version, 6.5.0. And um, the only thing with that is you usually want to update your import paths to use that scoping. Um, it's generally just going to be a better uh, step with your upgrade to try to go ahead and scope some of your import paths. Um, there are some deep nested import paths that you may have used from the past that will generally kind of go away over time. So it's better to move away from those um, and just use scoped imports. Um, another comment there on Angular 10. Um, just in case uh, some people just arrived, Angular 10 we got working with NativeScript today, and we'll be introducing that support probably tomorrow or Friday. We just want to wrap up a few details with the publish uh, to get it out. But um, it's worth noting that this upgrade path for 9 is going to be a lot of what you're going to want to do to prepare for 10 anyway. So a lot of what we're going to kind of look at and do here is what you'll want to do for Angular 10 um, anyway, there's some subtle differences maybe with NGCC, and in my preliminary test, it looks like we may be able to do away with uh, the post install on NGCC entirely with Angular 10, which will be nice. But it's worth uh, understanding what that is because you may still need to use it uh, even in Angular 10 projects. So um, go ahead, Alex. All right, very cool. So. Um can we just change this right now in the template to use at native script slash core? You could, yes. And I believe that the template is already using scoped imports anyway. So you probably could change that in this package right here without any problems. Okay, good. Uh, I think that's been kind of a, a point of confusion uh, going to from the old package names to the new scoped pass package names and people are wondering i've had some questions of people wondering whether they can just switch that over and everything will just work fine and uh yeah you can do that folks so go ahead and change that over so this is a brand new project right pretty simple nothing crazy going on here uh of course you know in a real world project people that have you know production applications going on they might have a few more things in here like plugins and so on and so forth so let's take uh now uh we'll take an existing native script angular project that i just created on my other computer earlier today because that one is has an old version of the cli now i i could also um just use npx in fact i did create another copy of it by calling npx native script at and then uh, an older version of the CLI to scaffold out a new application. So it'd be npx native script at the older version. If you need to do that, you probably don't want to go back, you want to go forward. So I'm just going to show you this real quick create and then app name and then ng. So that, that'll give you the ability to. Um, create and run using the older CLI if you want to do that. So I'm going to go to old ng and I'm going to run this. Now, Nathan, should I run this using the new CLI and it'll still run the old native script Angular project? Or should I run this using the old CLI? So everything kind of matches. You could try using the old CLI. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll try that out. NPX, yeah, it's always... You could also, you could also probably try to pull just an old template um, using, um, let's see, you could do TNS create app name, and then you could do dash dash template, and I think you oh. might be able to pass the template name and put an at symbol and use just an older version would probably pull the... Okay, the that's interesting. We can, we can try that later if we have uh, more time. Uh, NPX native script 6.2.2 run iOS. I'm just going to start it up in the background here, but let's take a look at this code right here. So this is the project as it was created. It's an older one. Um, 
here are the differences. So we have this, the uh, run times, uh, TNS Android at version 6.2, TNS iOS at version 6.2, and we have Angular pre-IV, pre-9, uh, and we have this native script Angular package, native script dash Angular. So this is the old package. It's no longer going to be used. Um, I think it's going to be deprecated pretty soon, right, Nathan? That's right. And it's worth mentioning with NativeScript 7.0, we're in uh, the same uh, spirit of scoping everything. We want to scope the runtimes too. So even the NativeScript key that's in the package where you set TNS iOS or TNS Android, those will end up becoming scope packages and dev dependencies like everything else you're used to. So the native script key in the package has always been a bit of an outlier. And um, just to kind of make it all consistent with uh, 7.0, you'll be able to just define at native script slash iOS in the dev dependencies. And you can manage your bundle IDs just from um, the nsconfig. And just a heads up, we've been talking about renaming nsconfig to native script dot config just to be a bit more clear. Um, there's always been, I think, some confusion around NS prefix things just because Apple APIs themselves are prefixed with NS. So just to make it super clear, I think that may become nativescript.config. But that'll be the central place where you can manage a lot of settings uh, around native script here in 7.0. Um, so yeah, it's good to note that. Okay. So we're going to try and upgrade this right now to uh, version nine now i understand that real world projects probably are a little bit more involved than this template here that we're using so here it is running on an ios simulator with football players or soccer players however you want to call them and this is the older version so we're going to go step by step and upgrade this to version nine now uh, i want to call everybody's attention to this thing right here which is a wiki on the native script repositories that actually tells you the steps so you don't need to watch this video you can just refer to this wiki uh, and this will have the most up-to-date steps if you ever you know need to look it up again let's see I'm just gonna post this in the chat the link to that and then you can uh, you can take a look at that at your own convenience and Follow along if you want to. Just not on a Friday night. It's always bad when you're upgrading stuff on a Friday night, historically. All right, so let's get going here. We're gonna go ahead and, one of the things I noticed right away is this env.aot flag that we have to pass in when we are building. So, TNS run iOS dash dash env dot aot. This is the new way of building the native script Angular applications going forward, right, Nathan? That is correct for Angular 9 with IV. Um, generally, you do want to start working with aot on all the time. Mm -hmm. But I actually have been exploring today baking that flag into the Webpack config because Angular 10 really you want IV on all the time. And uh, for that reason, it makes sense to just embed that flag in the config. So in Angular 10, that probably won't be required to pass that environment AOT. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's important to know that what that flag was doing, why it's there, the fact that it will be embedded in the config in Angular 10, um, and AOT is on all the time. Um, so for right now, Angular 9 IV, you do want to pass that environment, that AOT flag. Okay, so keep an eye out on this wiki as well for any updates around that. Let's get let's go through this. So now I'm gonna just follow what that wiki says pretty much and just update my project. Um, let's go with starting with Angular things. So I'm gonna switch from 8.2. I'm gonna do a search here and replace that with 9.1.0. Oops, I need to actually roll this down. 9.1.0, .1 
global replace okay we've got that replaced now this native script angular package we're getting rid of that we're gonna go with at native script slash angular 9.0.0 I already feel cleaner yes okay TNS core modules we're getting rid of this and going with at native script slash core and 658 okay is there anything else here that we need to update TypeScript maybe this is an older version of TypeScript. Yeah, you can go TypeScript to 3.8.3. 3.8.3. Okay. Let's see what else we need to do here. So I'm going through the wiki. Um, here's where we are. I've done these steps so far. Package.json needs to have a script. Uh, dev webpack, I would bump that to one five zero as well. Oh, okay. One more dev webpack. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, we're good to go with these, right? Did I get all these? Yeah. Okay. And now I need to add a script section for the Ivy related things. I don't have a script section yet, so let's do that. Scripts. Okay, now we need a new file called ngccconfig.js. Um, this is also for Ivy, right? Angular compiler. Okay, so this will help cases where various deep level core module imports occur across native script Angular. Okay, so let's copy this right here. Now, I could copy this from the other project I created as well. Because that template has all this stuff in it. Okay, now we're going to do something with tsconfig. And we're going to actually come back to tsconfig. Because I want to show how to disable Ivy in case somebody wants to do that. What do we need here? We need the files entry. And we need to make sure libs are updated. So let's go and do that. TS config. You want to make sure that you have the latest libs, which are these three, and the file section is something we need to add. Oh, okay. It's either or. It's not both. So it depends on your project setup. Some projects have a main.ts in the app folder, and some have it in the source folder. We have it yeah. in the source folder. Yeah. More of the modern uh, setup, I think, uses source, but there are some old projects, especially if you have an older project that might still use the app folder. Okay, that's that's good to know. So we we got source, so we're gonna use that. But if you have app, then use that. Okay, thanks, Prettier, for doing that. <laughs> and do I need this exclude section? Oh, I already have one, but do I need to update it to have all these things in it? Um, you can leave those in there, yeah. That exclude should be correct. It's, it's in there right now, it looks like. Uh, there's a couple things missing, like the this AOT one is missing and the E to E is missing. Uh, you can leave that out. Yeah, th that is for reference. Some old projects, too, have AOT files, and they may even have an E to E source uh, folder if they're doing Appium tests. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have those things, you can include that, but uh, the default project setups don't. Okay. So you can either omit them or include them if you have those. Thanks. So we'll keep that as is. Now tsconfig tns.json. That's this file right here. Uh, we want to make it target ES next. All right. So we already had ES next in there, lowercase, but I'm just going to have it the same as this. Okay, lazy loaded routing needs to use the new import syntax. Is that mandatory? Let's go over um, here. It is for the 
Um, AOT builds, yeah. And I think even Angular 9 Ivy may complain using the other syntax. Um, so I would say if you run into problems with lazy loading, double check your syntax. But I believe it actually might fail if you don't update that. Mm -hmm. So this template, unfortunately, doesn't have any lazy loaded routes, but you might be using lazy loaded routes. This is the old way of doing it. Load children, you point it to the module with a hash in there. The new way prefers using import, and then you just point it to that and grab that module class. So that is the new way of doing it. Okay. There's a couple of tips in troubleshooting. We won't get into that right now. We're gonna try and run this as is and see what happens. So I'm gonna go and say TNS run iOS env.aot. Let's hey, do this. Did you, clean, did you clean the project and install dependencies after changing it? That's something that probably would help. RM, RF, platforms, no modules. Yeah, my computer's struggling today. Wow. Well, you are streaming. On Zoom. Yeah, I have you Zoom going streaming on Zoom and, streaming on YouTube and so. streaming. So yeah, this is this is gonna do its thing now. Anybody have any questions right now? Let's see. Can I become a native script developer expert? Of course. So that was, a, I think you're referring to the old progress program that they had. It's no longer there, but uh, if you mean like uh, if there's a new program, um, there isn't one right now, but um, maybe there will be one. Nathan, what do you think about that? There is an experts group that is still communicating and the program that I know Jim Luther started uh, a couple years back, you know, I think probably what it would take the form as is becoming another steering committee through the open source project. So through some of the talks with OpenJS and organizing uh, an official technical steering committee, there'll probably be a uh, expert group that may be um, a voice on some of those uh, committees, whether it's called the developer expert group um, still, or some other committee as a part of the uh, governance around the open source project. Um, but yeah, that's why I say shoot an email to that OSS at manuscript.org and uh, we'll, be in, we'll be in touch with you and try to get something um, published on the governance docs, which we had planned to do by next week anyway. So definitely uh, reach out to us on that. Very nice. Thanks for that. Will NativeScript be certificate? Oh, will will be NativeScript certificate? Yeah, I mean through the same um, question as kind of the developer expert channel, whether there is a certificate um, that could be established through either a testing regimen that was provided through the steering committee. I think there's some possibilities of that and probably some value to provide that. Um, so uh, to answer Salem, uh, I think definitely there there is some potential that that could be the case. Uh, hopefully, maybe by the fall, uh, there could be something available along those lines. Okay, very cool. Using GraphQL native script. That's awesome. I want to know how to do that too. GraphQL is fun to use with native script, definitely. So, I gotta make a video on that. We're almost done. Now, what's happening right now? Right now, it's building. Yeah, so the one thing that NGCC does is it adds a bit more weight onto the initial build um, because it is cross compiling and it's making sure that your dependencies are compatible um, based on the main that's set in the package JSON. And that step can take a bit depending on how many plugins that you have. And uh, it looks like there is a slight improvement there in Angular 10 from what I'm seeing too, but there is a similar kind of process where it walks the dependencies there. So yeah, that, that helps with the uh, 
compilation and the OT, AOT process, of course, uh, it takes a little longer in the beginning, but the benefits outweigh that cost. So let's let's see here. We have a couple of references, I should have guessed, inside the project to the old native script Angular. Okay, so here is an example of that. Right here, I was looking right at it, but I didn't see it. So native script Angular is the old package. We need to replace that. But I think that's not a straight up replacement, right, Nathan? Because we are going to target the root level um, package and not... Yeah. I would go by each one of those there, the app routing module, open that up and go ahead and change it to at native script Angular. Mm -hmm. There's no deep import, so that can just flatten to at native script Angular alone. So and that's, yeah, that's an interesting point because you could replace this to just, you could do a global replace here, right, in your code base and say anything that's native script Angular, um, change that to at native script slash angular like this let That's me just right. at native script slash angular you can try to do a global replace sometimes it can be dangerous of course just depending on how big your project is right and kind of what all you're doing deep import wise there however um, yeah go ahead i know for myself whenever i do updates on um, really any code base i'm a bit more of a manual uh type on that sort of thing just because i always like to be extra careful um, updates along those lines, especially global find and replace, can really uh, get you in quite of a bit of a, a pickle, you know, if you're not totally aware of uh, what was touched there. So um, for this sort of thing, there's only a few files. I would just update these manually. Yeah. Uh, you know, just if you do a search, you can just go through it one by one and update it here, which is what I'm gonna do most likely, but I did wanna clear one thing up here, and that's if you do this kind of replacement, you'll still have things hanging off of the old native script dash angular package, like the router here. And in some cases, you don't want that. You just wanna point it at the, uh, the at native script slash angular without the deep import, like that. Is that right? So I've just replaced native script dash angular slash router and I've replaced that with at native script slash angular. And that's, you can just import it from the top level, that module, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna do that. Then let's see what else we have here. Uh, in main, we have to update it. I'm just gonna go to main. There it is. Again, importing it from the top level at native script slash angular. Where else do we have it? App module, and that's it, I think. Okay, here we have native script module, and we're importing it from native script dash angular slash native script module we're replacing this whole thing again with add native script angular okay save all and hopefully i got them all let's go down here starting incremental webpack compilation All right, any questions here? Thanks for answering those, Nathan. Okay, yep. Good, all right, so we got an issue here. Inspector modules in source. Yep, so this is pointing to a Webpack config that's out of date. So the best thing to do here is take a Webpack sample that I've posted up. Um, it's on a gist uh, at the moment. Let me link it. I'll actually link it in the chat here. Um, is Would that be the same um, Webpack config that I've created with a new project? Um, it should be, actually. You should be able to take this. It's similar, at least. Um, let me see if it'll... Oh, it's not going to let me post the link in 
Um, remove any web addresses and try again. So yeah, it doesn't want you to post web addresses in the YouTube, but um, Alex, this is good right You here. can post it to my chat and maybe I can do it in Zoom. Because it let me paste uh, a link before, maybe just less admins do that. Go. Okay. Here is the link, everybody. And we're looking at this right here. Okay, I want to be mindful of everybody's time. We're going to finish probably in five minutes. And I just want to get this issue resolved right here and then show you how to turn off Ivy if you need to do that. So this is um, the new Webpack config. Let's go ahead and uh, copy it in there. And I can just do a straight up replacement. Yeah, I would just copy and paste the entire thing. Okay, and, and since I'm there is uh, one or two dependencies we may need to touch with that, but let's uh, let's try it straight. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and restart this because it's not gonna pick up the webpack chain, uh, the web conf uh, web pack config changes. Okay, so let's see what happens there. Now this article right here, this wiki that I pointed you to initially, also has uh, the method to disable Ivy, and that's the method we're going to be following. So basically you go to tsconfig.json, add this section to it, enable Ivy false, disables Ivy. Why would you ever want to disable Ivy? Some plugins may give you more of a pain than others. It depends on how old they are. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps if you can contact the author or not, if the author's out of touch, you may have some issues with it. Mainly depends on how old the plugin is and how it was compiled and distributed on NPM. And if it's just giving you a whole lot of problems with IV enabled, then your kind of last resort is you can turn IV off. And uh, of course, at that point, you can kind of deal with that particular plugin uh, when time permits for your project, uh, potentially migrate to an, a different plugin that uh, doesn't give you so many problems, um, and or you could try to contribute to that plugin itself to make it uh, compatible. Mm -hmm. But um, that's generally why that option is there to disable. Okay. So uh, I've got the same error, Nathan. I got the can't resolve inspector modules in users old source and then I got an error in main.ts it's uh, yep. it looks like it's looking so, at the old so what we want to do is we're actually going to add the latest web pack um, to the dependencies here uh -huh. so this is something that's going to be updated with the um, latest dev web pack which we have a branch going on now and will probably probably be distributed with angular 10 for sure and we may release a patch version on it for um, the current Angular 9 projects, but go to the package dev dependencies. Okay, right here. And uh, what we want to do is we want to add Webpack, um, the latest version for the dev dependencies. Four dot forty three dot zero. Yep, the latest one, and then we're also going to add copy webpack plugin uh, here too, just to make sure that it's using the latest copy webpack plugin. Six dot zero dot three. Okay, is that it? Yeah, and then while you're at it here, I would also add Terser webpack. Uh, for good measure, make sure that it's at 2.2.0. Terser Webpack plugin, right? Right. And it's not the latest version, it's 2.2.0? That's right. Okay. 
All right. Are we done here then? I'll just uh, remove my no modules and rebuild it. Yep. All right, that's being pulled down. Let's see what happens here. I'll just leave this up for people to get this latest things we've added. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Um, by the way, whenever you clear your project, um, you should always clear node modules along with platforms and hooks, um, not just uh, node modules alone. Okay, I'll do that while it didn't get too far. Platforms, hooks, boom, gone. I always usually do clear the platforms, but for some reason I didn't do it this time. Okay, it's gonna rebuild. Any questions, folks? Zoom window still has you not centered. There we go. Hey folks, uh, has anybody here switched to Angular 9 yet? NativeScript Angular 9? Let me know in the comments there, in the live chat. And also, um, how many of you all are running production applications in NativeScript? Really curious about that. By the way, what do you think of this, Nathan, this uh, sweatshirt? <laughs> That's one of my favorite sweatshirts of all time. It's I think so mainly with the material there. So comfortable. I think I got a couple of these laying around. Maybe I'll just, uh, maybe we'll do a contest on this channel and send this out to folks. All right. Elayode Ezekiel says yes. Igor is on. Igor Angelovic, the creator of NativeScript View, is on the chat, folks. You left out platforms. Just check if Nathan is watching. Yes. He did catch me on that. Thanks, Igor. I, Wahyu Ramadan, says still on Angular 7. And Bitfor says I'll upgrade to Angular 9 tonight. Look at that. That's awesome. Abdullah Wahid, good to see you again. The winner of last month's contest. I'm using one app in production. Very cool. Tihomir Mikhailov says, plus one for production applications. Like my pronunciation of that? Tihamir <laughs> Mikhailov. Let's see where we are. We're still compiling, but this is a good sign. Oh, the other thing that's good to remove, Alex, is the package lock. So that package lock being there may actually uh, be interfering with your uh, dependencies as well. That package lock always gets in the way. Yeah, it can cause a lot of problems. Uh, it can. They're good for CI. Yeah. But if you're not doing a lot of CI um, integration builds, then they can tend to, to be havoc on the Yeah. You know, I wish I could somehow say, don't put that in there while I'm developing. We can add that later, but during development, leave that out of there, please. Thank you very much. Yeah. Really wish that was an option. Can you do something like that with Yarn? Yarn has a log file too now, right? Yeah, Yarn uh, manages it a bit better. And I know some some native script users I know switch to Yarn. Um, I, I will say I haven't fully yet myself, but um, definitely give it a shot. All right. I use it on several things, though. I do like it. Yeah. 
I, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, it does the same job. It's just uh, one is Facebook and one is not. They do have some differences, of course, folks. I just don't know them off the top of my head right now. And I think with native script, you only use NPM, no yarn. Could you use yarn with native script? You can. Oh. Okay, it's good. Where are we here? Is this the new application? Looks like we gotta go. Okay. Is this? We got a couple of warnings, but I don't see any errors. So I think this is the new app running right here. Those warnings right there. Oh, um, oh here we go, here we go. Okay, that was not it. Sorry, folks. This is now going to be it right here. It's restarting on the device. And bam. Okay, sorry, you were saying about the warnings? Those warnings right there about stale files, you can usually get rid of those by clearing the derived data from Xcode often. Stuff like that can come up if you're managing multiple projects or have run multiple native script apps, perhaps even against different versions or pinging back and forth from different projects. Sometimes the Xcode derived data can fill up. That's kind of like Xcode's own internal cache. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can um, clear that. If you Google just uh, clear or remove or delete Xcode derived data, I think there's a really good article that comes up at the top of Google hit results on that. Okay. And uh, they're usually in your user library, I think developer Xcode derived data. But yeah, those are always good to clean uh, sometimes and especially a good practice to clean those uh, from time to time because they do end up with just stuff that conflicts with some Xcode builds and you can end up with stale files like that. It's not a native script thing, it's just purely a Xcode and iOS development tool chain thing. Yep. And a lot of these messages are coming from um, the underlying build processes of Xcode or if you're doing Android stuff, it's gonna see Android messages there. But this is the app, it's running now. This is, of course, Ivy uh, with Angular 9 and native script Angular. Now we could uh, turn this off. We could turn the IV off here. And um, the only thing I believe I need to do is go to my TS config and add this. Angular compiler options enable IV is false. Is is that it, Nathan? Is that all I have to do? Yes. Let's do that. I'm going to stop this. And... Now, it may require a rebuild with NGCC removed, but mm -hmm. let's try it with just that. I don't need to remove platforms or no modules at this point. I can just do this, right? Uh, Give that a try, yeah. I've, it's possible we may want to rebuild with that set to false, because I think once Ivy has done its build, it's possible that those um, Ivy cross-compiled modules may um, get in the way, but give it a shot. Okay. If it gives us trouble, then I think generally just cleaning and rebuilding um, should should get rid of it. All right, so we're almost out of time here. I just wanted to show you this one last thing, and I want to say thank you to Nathan for coming on and explaining what's going on with the latest developments in native script with Angular because Nathan has been working, um, what is it, 25 hours a day you've been working on this? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we listen, we use Angular and native script and production apps daily, on yeah. a daily basis across many different projects. It's very much a uh, production uh, ready environment that we use on a daily basis. So it's as much our uh, priority to keep them up to date and maintained as it is for you all. And uh, to the extent we can do it as fast as possible, that's what we intend to do. And uh, we hope you all. Uh, can uh, reap the same benefits. So um, in any case, again, like I mentioned, Angular 10 is right around the corner. Uh, we have the support working today and we probably will publish the support tomorrow or by Friday. And, um, you know, again, it's worth going through these update steps because these update steps will be very similar for Angular 10. So uh, once we do drop support for Angular 10, there only may be a few minor adjustments, but you'll already be ready um, to bump to Angular 10 when that, when that comes out. So you heard it right here, folks. It's coming very soon, and we're going to be on a roll 
with this stuff. So it's going to be great. Let's see. Uh, we have Igor here. Igor is the creator of NativeScript View, of course. And as you can see, we're all friends here. NativeScript Angular folks and NativeScript View folks, we get along quite well. Uh, yeah, in fact, Igor and I, uh, yeah. we work on the same team. Uh, it's been very eye-opening to uh, cross-reference issues between both framework integrations. Um, and both framework integrations can kind of push each other uh, to make them better. So it's, it's always nice to have cross-project collaboration in that way. That's right. So thanks to these guys that are doing amazing work here. Let's see. Um, let's answer a couple of questions here, and then we're going to call it a night. Christian Crispier Ramirez says, can I use Angular Resolver in NativeScript? Yes, yes, you can. Um, in fact, we use a component resolver on uh, many dynamic uh, component creation setups. Uh, there's quite a bit you can do with uh, dynamic component creation with NativeScript and Angular, yes. Okay. And uh, my chat is a little bit delayed, so I don't know if anybody is asking more questions. But folks, this video will be up. Uh, I believe YouTube just saves this as a regular video, and it'll be up on the channel. So if you do have additional thoughts or comments, feel free to comment over there. And uh, we hope to be back with less initial technical difficulties next time. Um, keep an eye out on the native script channel as well on YouTube. We are going to have some new stuff posted over there as well. And I did have a little poll on this channel about what time is good for everybody. And everybody said around evening time, 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern United States is good for them. But I know everybody's all over the world, so it might not be the most convenient time. So if you have uh, any other preferences, definitely leave a comment. Uh, there is a tentative date for Vue 3 support in NativeScript. Um, I think that's being worked on right now, but there is no official release date for Vue 3 for uh, support in NativeScript, but it is being currently worked on. And of course, reach out to Igor for any specific things there. Uh, Jonathan Nangari sent five dollars. I didn't know you could do that. That's amazing. Hey, thank you, Jonathan. Thank really you. Appreciate that. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna send that directly to uh, the Native Script Fund as well. And just uh, by the way, that's. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Nathan? The yes. Yeah, so Native Script is now an open collective. Um, the funds from there will go directly to uh, bug fixes, uh, framework work, um, definitely prioritizing um, all the maintenance uh, around the framework. And um, any sponsorships there definitely go into uh, a m many, many things that are circulating the framework. You know, uh, I know an improvement to docs is needed. Um, there is uh, some updates to the website that is occurring too that probably will go live sometime in August. And um, uh, there's also GitHub sponsors, which is tied into Open Collective, but there may be some other sources to GitHub too. So, you know, all that goes to helping uh, solidify native scripts future and I think helps also ensure that bug fixes are done uh, efficiently without uh, any undue delay. It's very helpful. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for showing up today. Uh, and wherever you are in the world, uh, it might be late for you. I know it's late for Igor at least. So I really appreciate you guys being here, and we'll see you again soon. And thanks, Nathan, for showing up as well and for Take your care, contributions. Everyone. Really uh, appreciate the great questions. All right, bye, everybody.